Welcome to my channel, where there are interesting and equally sensational stories. Listen to today's story. Sometimes it's hard to move on. Sometimes it's downright scary, but your life doesn't get better by chance. It gets better by change. Today, on our space, turn the page. Upburst, a cheater turns to OP's best friend for comfort and finds herself locked between his legs instead. My ex, female 22, cheated on me, male 21, with my childhood best friend, male 21. So here's my story about how I lost the love of my life, C, and my best friend, J, all in one day. It all started when I met C in grade 5, and I had a crush on her for years. Never going to talk to her or anything as I was just figuring out these feelings. Plus I knew I was an introvert from the beginning barely having any real friends besides a small group of four, one of them being my best friend, Jay. We did everything a kid could do together, go camping, something I didn't like, but was fun with him. Playing video games, board games, sleepovers, all those things, and thought of him as a brother. It was he who had the courage to add her to our friends group. We grew closer as we got older. It was only in grade 9 that me and C were starting to get closer as friends. During high school, when we were both in grade 10, I finally gained the courage to ask C out, and to my surprise and happiness, she said, yes. Our first date was amazing as I took her out to her favorite restaurant, which wasn't really expensive, but did have a big bill. Then we went skating as she has always loved that, and that was one of the best memories I've ever had. Over the next four years, we had the best relationship, or at least what I thought was the best. It was only during the year three of our relationship that C wanted to go to the next level, and so did I. But I was just so nervous about it that I never realized what was happening between my girlfriend and best friend until it was too late. I was also stressed from the SATs that I didn't have enough time to spend with her either. It all came to a screeching halt when I not only passed my SATs, my nervousness about having sex went away with the letter, and I walked to her apartment to tell her the great news. I entered the elevator to go to her floor and walked to her door when I noticed it was open slightly. So in a panic, I opened the door myself, not thinking straight, and thinking she was in trouble, but found nothing. I walked around the apartment, but eventually I noticed the trail of clothes leading up to her bedroom door. If those weren't obvious, then the moans and screams of pleasure were that was until I noticed the jack on the ground. The very same one I gave Jay on his 18th birthday. I saw only red when I thought that and barge into her room, where they were both shocked at my interruption, but C soon screamed in terror as I pulled Jay off of her and started beating him. I was never a violent person growing up, but this, this rage and betrayal turned me into someone I hope I could never be again. It's been two weeks since I caught J and C together, and I have been ignoring every message they sent me, every call and voicemail they made, and have even ignored their family's attempts at getting me to speak to them. I couldn't stand to be in the same room with them anymore. Every time I think of them, I just remember that day when I caught them. Hope you guys have any advice about what I should do next with them. Because I don't. It's completely fair to not want to speak to them, OP. They were the two people that you entrusted implicitly, and they betrayed your trust. Honestly, there's not really much they can say to you after something like that. It makes you wonder if they've always had a thing for each other and they've just been hiding it right in front of you this whole time. I'm sorry, O oh page update. So here's my update on my situation. Sorry this took a bit, but I decided to just look at the future for myself now after everything that happened. So on to the update. As many of you pointed out, I had to get the truth about our breakup before the two of them vilify me. To my and possibly your surprise, they didn't say anything about me, but they also didn't out themselves. The two of them kept quiet about the whole thing, and I couldn't stand that. Watching as if nothing happened between the three of us. So I contacted as many of our mutual friends as I could to tell them. Some believed me. Others thought I was in the wrong and a few were indifferent, 
but I'll look at JNC differently after that day as I had many details of what they did while those piece of craps after I added the two of them. I realized I needed to get away from the city. I lived here my whole life, but I had to get away I just couldn't stand being close to C and J anymore. I was simply getting boxes of my stuff ready to move when I could, and I hear a knock of the door. And wouldn't you know C was standing right outside? Her eyes just bloodshot and looks like she hadn't slept in days. I barely opened it for her anyway. So I just rudely ask, what are you doing here? Cause I'm not about to be gracious towards her and never will again. She asked to be let in to talk for a minute. And had decided to do so, but not to take her back to just hear the excuses I know she'll come up with. She started to cry asking for forgiveness I wanted to explain why she did what she did. I kept a straight face and didn't say a word while she was speaking. She told me how she felt neglected because of the lack of sex between us, which I guess is true. She went on to say that Jay comforted her, and she slowly began to fall for him as the days went on, and one thing led to another. And I had caught them soon after they became physical. After she was done, I told her that if she fell for Jay, all she had to tell me was that she wanted to break up. I would have accepted them getting together afterwards, but they didn't do so. Instead, I saw my first love in bed with my best friend. I told her I was moving away after this, but I couldn't stand it being in the city anymore with C and J or their family, but I didn't tell her where because I don't want her to follow me. I saw the tears flowing even faster as she heard that. Guess she thought that we could reconcile after what happened. Well, sorry, C. But I got other plans than to take you back. After that, I just held onto her hand. She gained a hopeful look in her eyes and I led her to the door before pushing her out. She turned towards me, pure sadness in her eyes. I'll never love you again. Go back to Jay. I'm sure he'll be happy to accept you fully after all. He already did so. I slammed the door in her face after that and heard her crying outside, but didn't care and just continued to relax and pack my stuff. As for Jay, well, Never bothered with him again. Didn't speak to him. Didn't respond to any of his messages. Nothing. I'm done with them, and nothing will change that. So that's my update. Nothing too big, but, hey, don't really care right now to make this my whole life story. So goodbye, and have a nice day. Let's get a reaction from the community. My buddy's wayward wife caught up with him as he was about to board a flight. He told her that he as well could not be in the same city as either of them. He feared for what he would do. She asked where he was going. He rattled off her five every places and her jaw drop. He said he purposely asked for some place she would die to move to. And then tell her that she was not welcome there. She threatened to follow, and he said he had already gotten a restraining order due to her harassment. Her affair broke up nearly immediately. She resented a fair partner for ruining her life. She found out that betrayed husband was living in her favorite place on this planet. He was on the beach every day and swam in the ocean every day. No snow. No heating bills. She saw that he had taken up with a real California girl. She gained 50 pounds from frustration and resentment. Sometimes we have to start over. It's hard you live in a place where you have a memory of your ex everywhere you turn. Shame on her for going to your friend about your private life. Something like that should have stayed between the two of you. That's intimate information. And if that's really something she wanted to do and if it was a huge deal breaker, she should have had the conversation with you. Here's the new chapters up. I hope you find what you're looking for. Next up, this op had to move states to get rid of her serial cheater. My boyfriend, male 23, got his lover, female 25, pregnant, and I, female 21, don't know what to do. Update. I've never posted it before, so I'll update this way. Context. I discovered that my boyfriend with whom I have been in a relationship for almost years was having an affair with whom I will call Anna. I gave him many chances after he told me he would change, but he kept cheating on me. On January 31st, she confessed to me that her actions had consequences, and Anna is now four months pregnant. He told me that he would like me to stay, that he was already doing better, 
but that he would respect my decision if I wanted to leave. I asked for advice on whether I should stay and give him another chance or just leave. My original post was removed by the moderators, but you can find it on my profile. All the comments were about me leaving. So that's what I'll do. A week ago, I spoke with my boss and presented my resignation weeks. I am putting my things in order and starting to get rid of some of my belongings. I'm planning to leave without telling him. Would I beat the bad guy if I leave like that? Read it. I need advice. Should I let him know that I'm leaving or just go? If he's able to cheat on you without telling you, you should be able to leave without telling him. You don't owe him anything. Update. English is not my native language, so I apologize for confusing words. I thank everyone for their advice and good wishes. You can find my other updates on my profile. So after my now ex confessed to me that Anna was pregnant by him, I knew that this was the limit. But I still wasn't sure to leave the relationship. I knew what I should do, but I guess I wasn't thinking correctly. I came to you and finally got up the courage to leave. After I handed in my resignation, my boss asked me if I could stay a bit longer since there was not enough staff in my area. I agreed and helped train the new guys. I miss my colleagues. Started giving away and donating most of my things. I also sent some of my belongings by parcel. The idea was not to tell him that I was leaving, but one day, he was making plans and I said, you know what? I'm going to go. His reaction was to turn his back on me and stop talking to me for several minutes, and then he turned bright-eyed and apologized for his actions. He asked me when I would leave, and I replied, this is my last week of work. He was very kind to me, cooking me dinners and taking me on a weekend trip, then he saw me pack and didn't say anything. My flight left at night and before going to the airport, went to say goodbye to his family. When his mother asked me why I was leaving, I just told her that things with her son weren't working anymore and that I wanted to be close to my family. She asked me, it's because of another woman. Right? And Evelyn answered, yes. She apologized to me for her son's nonsense. She offered me lodging at her house in case I didn't want to take that flight. Then his father offered to take me to the airport. The family got into the family van and took me home to collect my luggage. My ex was in the room and begged me not to leave. I asked him to come with us to the airport, and he refused because he didn't want to fight with his family. In the end, he just watched me walk out the door. His parents said that I can always count on them. And in case I don't like the new place, their doors will always be open. They also said that they had gained a daughter with me. It gave me their best wishes. I cried when I had to say goodbye. The girls, 5 and 10, told me. It broke my heart to say goodbye to this great family. I lost a boyfriend, but I gained a family. I arrived at this new place and is very beautiful. Everything is so green and very calm. I left the Golden State behind and now live in a place where it snows at Christmas, 26,100 miles away from my old home. It's been a while. I'm still in contact with my ex's family. His parents already know about the baby, and although they scolded him, they know that repudiating him would also mean losing his grandson. I'm good at knitting, and so that the girls know that I have them in mind, I'm knitting hats and bags for them. I plan to visit them. I keep adapting. I have a new job, saving money for a car, and I feel like I am starting a new beginning. I downloaded a dating app with the intention of having a little fun. No strings attached, just fun, and told every guy that. I ran into one in particular a month ago. I'll call him Sam, which share a lot in common, and the laughs never stop. I told him about my acts that I'm healing my broken heart and that I'm not ready for a new relationship. Sam told me that he understands, and we've been just dating for now. Maybe this will progress or not. I haven't dated anyone since we met. I'm attracted to the idea of starting from scratch with someone. And Sam seems to be a wonderful guy. But nevertheless, the situation with my ex has left me a little traumatized with insecurities. In April, my ex flew 10 states to see me. He said he was really sorry he ruined everything. I know karma is taking its toll. 
he said that he is willing to do anything for a reconciliation, including moving to this state. He took out a ring and asked me to marry him. Maybe I cried with rage because he doesn't make sense to try now. A while ago, I would have been the happiest woman in the world. Now it doesn't matter. Obviously, I said no to his proposal. He asked me to keep the ring. Agree to go with him on a five-hour drive to a famous place in the east of the country. We talked about everything. We had moments of crying and laughing. Although I care for him now, I understand that being away from him is the best. I have had time to think about everything, and I can't believe he was capable of hurting me so much. I found out that he dated three girls, only the ones I found out about. One of them, Maggie 18, is a very sweet girl with the most beautiful heart I have ever met, and wherever she is, I wish her the best in the world and I knew about her, and I sent her an audio through a fake account where she spoke and laughed with my ex. Then there's Nancy, 20, I think, a nice and religious girl. I knew my ex cheated on me with her about three years ago. She didn't know about me, and I still don't know why they broke up. And she blocked him. Finally, there's Anna. My ex had dates with Maggie and Anna while he was with me. I would never feel comfortable in a relationship with him again. I don't plan on going back anymore. He says he's hurting a lot because of me and calls me drunk at dawn to apologize and never thought that I would be the one to leave the relationship. His life is going to be really bad. He crashes car for drunk driving, and the baby might not be his. I feel sorry for him. It turns out that Anna also dated other men and one of them even gave her money for the baby. My ex confronted her and she didn't deny anything. I'm updating you today because Anna is in the hospital and labor. I always saw her as another victim of my ex, but she didn't see me in the same way. He texted me on Valentine's Day to ask if my ex had already taken me out to dinner because he said that he had invited her to breakfast and then he said that she was six months pregnant. She didn't know that my ex had already told me. And I think his intention was to ruin my day and make me feel bad. That woman likes chaos and she has always been defensive. I no longer feel sorry for her. Let's see how the community reacts. First up, he couldn't have blown his life up better if he tried. He better hope that kid isn't his. And it sounds unstable. I feel for you OP. I'm glad you got away and are doing well. Just think all he would have had to do was not be a lying cheater. Another respondent says, whether the baby is his or not, do not take that man back. Move on from trash. I'm sorry I had to move away to get rid of him. OP, I'd block him. You moved away, so you wouldn't have to deal with him. He moved away to start new. You don't need him in this next chapter. Leave him in the past. Maybe it's best to go no contact. He really did you dirty and you may be being far too nice to him despite all that he's done to you. It's very bittersweet that his family was so kind to you. Your boyfriend literally didn't know what he had until it was gone. That, Andrew, very much the one that got out of his grasp and wasn't playing the little game of his anymore. Wishing you all the best op, it sounds like you're off to a great start. Do you have a similar experience? We want to hear it. And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you soon.